Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to recognize the union between Christopher Brian Harrison and one beautiful Lauren Esmeralda Zima. On this 27th day of April in Austin, Texas, we will exchange vows between a beautiful... What was that? They're, they're not... They're not married? There wasn't a wedding? It was a wedding? She was the bri That was a bridesmaid's dress? Why did it look like a wedding dress? But the photo's black and white. You don't post a black and white photo unless you're getting married. This free cake. So everyone thought they were married, and it turns out they're not? Well, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. Neil Lane wasn't... We have no... Do we have eyes on Neil Lane? There's no Neil Lane. Well, he's under contract, so I, I guess he's not married. You mean to tell me he posted a photo, black and white, where he's kissing? And he's just a plus one? Okay. All right. Yes, I have Canon and D on my Roadcaster Pro mixer at all times. Yes, I'm always ready for an impromptu wedding during a pandemic. Will you do you then? Are you going to do the whole video where you're talking to yourself? Maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dave Neal here. Uh, it is not a wedding. We need Mari. Can we get Mari Povich on the line? We need him to open something up and be like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have the results of this Instagram photo. And it turns out it is not a marriage. Oh, you know what I mean? Someone got tackled somebody. Someone throws. Oh. All right. I guess they're not getting married. I thought we had a, I mean, if they, am I wrong? You know what I mean? Did my eyes beseech me? I looked at this photo and knew they got married. They either got, here, here's the deal. You don't post a black and white photo like this unless you just got married or you both just died in a plane crash. This is an RIP photo. This is a blessed be you got married photo or it's an RIP photo. You know, it's not April 1st. It's the end of the month. I'm a little stressed out. You got me on my good day wearing the denim with the good hair. And I was ready to rejoice. I mean, put the honey, put the champagne away. Just put the cork back on. Save it for next. Okay. I mean, I'm not alone, right, guys? Yeah, I'm gonna play the whole Canon and D. It's a beautiful song. If you don't, if you don't want to get married to a cello, you got something coming to you. Because let me tell you something. When I get married, I want a cello and a sandy beach with stand between my toes. That's what I want. I don't want anything else. Doves? Put the doves away. We had we ordered doves, Chris Harrison. I'm going to have to invoice you for doves. Uh, by the way, someone in the comments section told me that as a side job, their family has a dove farm, a dove farm, a dove farm, and they'll release the doves, and then they'll fly back home. And they did a wedding that was two hours away, and the doves knew how to fly back home. It's like, get them an Uber pool or something. You know what I mean? All right, so uh, this is what we have here. We have a, uh, I guess... Uh, the, 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 the news ran that they were getting married. You know, this is a good example of our lack of media literacy here, folks, is that it doesn't take much. For, like, we don't read the article. We just look at the headlines. And the headlines say you got married before you could get canceled. That's what, you know, and, now, and, then, and, then, I, and then I was thinking about it because I found out that they were getting married um, right before I had to do two stand-up sets. So I had two hours where I wasn't looking at my phone. And in that time, I was thinking, oh, man, like, what am I going to talk about? They got married. Oh, yeah, great idea. It's uh, dodge some coverage. It's, you know, nothing but good news and love. And then he can be a true host for the show because he's married and he can talk about the power of love and th the fact that she covered the Bachelor franchise and the fact that he's the host and they came together. No, none of it. It's not true. None of it's true. He did say he loved her, so let's get into that. So this is, we're going to keep this song playing. So this is Chris, Har this is uh, Bachelor Nation that Scoop put this together for me. Uh, so wait, hold on a second. Let, before I get to Bachelor Nation Scoop, this is Chris Harrison's Instagram. This is what he said. I'd stop the world and melt with you. Lauren Zima, there's no one I'd rather celebrate love with, and I'll be your plus one anytime. Even though he says I'll be your plus one anytime, I still took it as marriage. And you know, the, you know, ladies. Let me tell you something. Every time a guy bends down to tie his shoe, the lady thinks she's getting proposed to, okay? It's a, it's a big, you know what, it's archaic. It's a power dynamic problem in 2021. I'm not saying it should be the other way around. I'm just saying no person should have to wait on the other person to propose. 
But that's what we do. This is the world we live in. I'm just saying, you know, maybe have a conversation. You know, I told Tasha before I proposed, I was like, I'm not going to surprise you in front of people. I'm going to do it in the private somewhere. I found a private beach in Thailand, as you do. But I was just like, don't think I'm going to be jumbotron in this on an arena. Just in the off chance you're having a bad day, you're hungry, and you say no. You know what I mean? I got to feed you first, and then I'm going to propose when you're happy after being fed. Um, but not so far after being fed where you're tired. You know what I mean? You got to propose like you're dealing with a baby, right? You got to feed the baby. Burp them and then propose. Okay. So Lauren says, I love you so much and appreciate all the congrats. This bridesmaid's dress is really living up, living above its potential. Oh, even Colton Underwood's on there. Oh boy. We don't, should we track what Colton Underwood says? It's enough tracking for the day. Ah, hold on a second. Get off of here. This post is unrelated to your rant. Oh wait, that's someone else. Do we go to the whole, I guess you guys can do this on your own time. Just rant. Silence is golden. Give it a rest. What are they saying? Cancel culture for what Chris said is over. Cancel culture for an abusive stalker, a.k.a. Colton, is still very much on. He needs to go T-F-O-A. Hey, that's a good point by Shelly, I got to say. Not just because I agree with it, but, you know, cancel culture does come in different layers. But when it comes to Colton, until you atone for your sins, you must remain repentant. Whatever the <laughs> brimstone and fire. <laughs> Should I have a button where I just become a pastor? <laughs> you shall not dance in this town. Dancing's for the devil. Only the devil does the jig, you know what I mean? But either way, they did the chicken dance and they got they got boogie with it uh, or jiggy with it or whatever the hell they do in Texas. I don't know what kind of hoedown they're a part of. Not a hoedown here. Oh, look, she's got the pockets. Let me tell you something. Let me, ladies, I'm, I've been on to you guys for a long time. Ladies love a dress with a pocket, okay? Let me tell you something too. I've never seen a lady use the pockets in her dress because she makes the guy hold on to the chapstick, lip balm, blush, you know, birth control pill at 9 p.m., whatever it may be, but you love a good, you know why? Because it gives you a reason to put your hand right there where it slims everything out and makes you look good. And I appreciate that, ladies. You do you. I'm just saying, what's up with the dress here? Where, who made it? You know what I mean? Give me some info. Very cute photo. He's looking good. They're both looking good. And I was so excited to announce that they were married. Uh, but again, uh, that is not true. They are just uh, dating. I don't even think they're uh, engaged. I don't think they've got that going on either, right? He hasn't put a ring on it. I was also thinking, wow, this is wild that they got married and didn't make it like a bachelor-themed thing. But then again, like I said, everything I'm saying right now is based off of uh, lies. It's all lies, folks. Jason Tartik, uh, by the way, he hasn't proposed, right? They're, they're not married. They're not engaged. That That is long overdue, by the way. I mean, take your time, bro. Um, no, it took me six years. Uh, don't worry about it. Do, do whatever feels right for your relationship, Jason. Jason said, I went full CSI mode on this pic in every word in caption, and I still have no conclusion other than this is a beautiful picture of you two. Same here. I'm looking at wingtip shoes and Egyptian toenails, and I got the whole thing going on. And <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm Googling the, you know, the designer of the stiletto. You know, the, there's a lot happening here, but as it turns out, it's a whole uh, much to do about nothing, which is a black and white movie, much ado about nothing, uh, or play. It's, it's both. Uh, but um, what else do we have here? So it made me think, you know, and I like to uh, I like to always spin these things into a longer video in case you're, uh, you know, in the off chance you're having lunch, you're eating a pastrami and you're saying, no, Dave, don't be done already. I want you to, you know, talk about how this correlates to the Berenstein effect. Well, uh, hold on to your chocolate milk, folks, because this is exactly the Berenstein effect, because now it's making me wonder, maybe they really did get married but something went wrong and they somebody went back in time and fixed it and now it's just an engagement photo. Have we been living in a simulation? Did I drink too much coffee? I don't know, folks, but I think there's a world in which they may have been married. Now, if you don't know the Berenstein effect, I want to take you back to my literature from the 90s from the Scholastic Book Club, the Berenstein Bears. Are the Berenstein Bears part of an interdimensional conspiracy? Now, hold on, folks. Don't go anywhere. We don't need Canon and D for this. You may think it's this post title sounds crazy, but read a little closer. Does anything seem strange? Just the slightest bit not right, grammatically speaking. If so, fear not, you're far from alone. The Berenstein Bears are one of the great institutions in children's literature. That is a fact. They're, they're just bears that live together and, uh, you know, they have little, you know, but in real life you'll get clawed to death. I mean, how many people got mauled because they were like, look, daddy, it's a, you know, all right. The Berenstein bears are one of the great, great institutions in children's literature. They're practically foundational texts for most Americans under 50 with hundreds of stories written blah, 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 except that isn't their name at all. While many people, this writer included, distinctly remember the name spelled Berenstein, pronounced Steen. The actual name of both the bears and their authors is Baron Stain, pronounced as it would be, Stain. 
This controversy has created online factions, with one side assuming that the other always has been spelled Berenstain, and that this is just a widespread misunderstanding. But some who believe in Berenstain argue that this controversy is something more, a conspiracy. The theory has been floating around the blogosphere since at least 2011, but gained significant steam last year, this was in 2016, when Stranger Dimensions reported on the issue. To paraphrase some fairly serious quantum physics, the theory posits that sometime between 1986 and 2011, our universe in which the bears were named Baron Steen merged, hold on folks, was uh, Lauren Zima born in this time period? Hold on, let's get the date of birth. Hold on, let's, let's pull up a Lauren Zima date of birth. If she was born between 1980s, 1987! Are you kidding me? You heard it here first, folks. This is big news. I wasn't even prepared, so I had to pull it up. To paraphrase some fairly serious quantum physics, the theory posits that sometime between 86 and 2011, our universe, in which the bears were named Berenstein, merged with a near-identical parallel universe in which the family is called Berenstein, which altered our history and left many people perplexed by the change. Further theorists argue that this mess could even have been created by an errant time traveler. Now, you want to tell me that they didn't get married in some parallel universe, but all of a sudden she's got a pocket in her dress so she can hide the ring? I'm telling you right now, I'm on to you, and I think I live in a world where we... I hit the wrong button. I think I live in a world where we can note that there are parallel universes. We believe in conspiracies. Some of you guys believe I didn't even get the vaccine. You guys think it was a made-up thing where I hired 5,000 cars to wait in line with me to pump myself full of apple juice. Well, the fact is, I did get the vaccine, dose one and two, and the conspiracy is your right to believe in it, you crazy nut job. And if you want to believe that the Berenstein Bears existed in a parallel universe between 1986 and 2011, and somehow Lauren um, Esmeralda Zima was born in 1987, smashed up inside of that, bumped her Harrison literally inside that um, parallel universe, well, then you go ahead and believe what you need to believe. Because I think there's a world in which these two are married right now. It might not be where we are, but it might be a parallel universe. And I want to be part of that universe. Maybe Chris Harrison never interviewed Rachel Lindsay. Maybe he still has his job. But where we live right now in our universe, we've got a show premiering June 7th, 2021, co-hosted by the Canadian herself, Caitlin Bristow, not engaged to Jason Tartik, and her other co-host, Taysha. First name only because she's famous enough. But in that world is where I want to be, where Chris Harrison and Lauren Zima are together and married. In the meantime, we live here, and this is our reality, and they aren't even engaged yet. So somebody call Neil Lane, get a hold of the largest rock you can find, and throw it on that lady's ring finger. I'm Dave Neal, and this was a whole waste of your time. Bye, everybody.